Okay, so this will be a quick introduction into PyShark. I've been asked um, quite a few times to do a tutorial or some more documentation, but I just couldn't find the time, so I'll just do this quick video and hopefully if someone can write all of this information down um, and post it just about anywhere, that'll be really good. And if not, well, it's open source, so you get what you pay for. Um, so PyShark is basically a wrapper for T-Shark, which is Wireshark's um, command line interface, um, which means that PyShark allows you to parse packets and access the information in them while using all of uh, Wireshark's parsing abilities, unlike packages like Scappy or Deepocket, which um, have to have all the parsing code themselves. So basically you have any protocol that Wireshark can parse, uh, you can use. There are multiple disadvantages to this. Um, I'll talk about them later maybe. So as you can see, you have multiple ways of capturing. These are the main three ones. So we have file capture, which is basically just um, reading a PCAP file, which is very useful. In mem capture means um, just reading out like binary. Uh, packets and parsing them and live capture just captures from a live interface So we'll start with the simplest uh, probably the most useful um, Just reading a capture file. So we have this uh, just regular HTTP sample from Wireshark's um, Website So if I want to use this file capture um, I can just give as the first uh, argument the path for it and then I have my capture object. In this capture object, um, there are the packets. It does not actually start parsing until you um, start going through the packet. So you don't have to worry about the initialization part. To access the packets, you have multiple ways. If you're working in, as in an uh, interpreter like I am right now, you can just you know use indexes and get the packet objects like so. Um, if you're working with code, you can go uh, for packet in C and do whatever you want with the packets. You can use apply and packets which receives a callback uh, which will be run on every single packet um, until the timeout is out or this amount of packets um, has been read. This is obviously more useful for a live capture. Um, you can also use um, packets from T-Shark. This is, use, this is a coroutine so this is useful if you're using async IO's event loop uh, and you want to use it with PyShark. Uh, I won't get into this right now, maybe in a separate video. So let's just start and see how we work on the packets themselves. So let's just take this first packet. Okay, we can see it here in the capture. It's just a regular TCP SYN packet. And let's say that we want to just get the IPs first. So this works very similarly to other packages. Um, each packet has various layers, so here we have your Ethernet, IP, and TCP. Um, if you want to check if a packet has a certain layer, we can just use the same way as um, as we do in Scopy. We can just use um, the string, the name of the uh, pa um, layer, and just check if it's in the packet. Um, if you want to access the layer, we have multiple ways. The first way is just to uh, go to the layer number, so 0 will be Ethernet, 1 will be IP so forth. We can use the name again um, in this way or we can, especially if we're working with an interpreter and we have autocomplete and everything, then we can just um, use this attribute. Once we have the layer, we have our various attributes. So if I want to see them, I can obviously just use autocomplete or I can use filled names or I can just go to Wireshark and have a look at the various um, names which we can see here so this is ip version for example so if you go packet ip version we'll get four and here we can see the source and dest very straightforward it can get a bit more complex it's for example if we look at flags here then we have all these flags and basically we can uh, just reach them instead of flags.rb we'll have flags underscore rb but as you can see, all the 
um, objects re that return our strings, which is because we're just basically parsing the XML and we have no way of knowing what type the object is. So for this reason, there are sort of utility properties to all of these attributes. So for example, you have int, int value, just gonna cast it to int. And if you want to retrieve the original value, the value basically that PyShark itself got, you just have the raw value. If we go to something more interesting like TTL, um, you can see that it basically got the same thing in base64. So let's, for example, look at this HTTP packet. We can also just print out uh, the packet's contents and we can just see it kind of the same way. Oh, sorry, it's three. Um, kind of the same way as we would in Wireshark. Just, and here it's very easy to see um, what's going on. And let's say we want just to get the um, URL so we can see its host. So we'll just packet HTTP host. Um, and we just get the URL, which is very simple. So aside from the default mode, which we just saw, we have the JSON mode and the summaries mode. Uh, basically the JSON mode gives us less information, but um, at higher speed. So if we're working on, you know, small or to medium capture files, or we're working in a small network, then we'd rather use the default mode, the XML mode. Uh, which has the most information. Uh, if we have a lot of data, then we want to start using the JSON mode. So the JSON mode um, has less information. So if I just use just the exact pa same packet as we did at first, and I print out the um, information side, you can see that you have less stuff. You don't have all the um, like expert Wireshark stuff, but it still works pretty similarly, so I'll have the IP source or whatever. So as you can see, if we look here, um, we have flags as a nested attribute. So if we go to packet.tcp flags, we you can see that if we just go to flags, we'll just have the um, like binary flags, but we'll also have the flags tree um, attribute, which we'll just have sin um, as a nested attribute. Um, unlike the way we would do it in the regular default mode, which is uh, this way. Um, this is basically like backwards comp compatibility. Um, I probably would have done it in the nested way in both ways if I could, but just because of the way it works and I didn't want to break the code for everyone who's been using it for a while. So the new way just works in the JSON way and the attributes name are not always the same. So you must check it and they're usually closer to what Wireshark displays here. The third and final way to parse packets is using um, packet summaries. Summaries just include like very little information. Um, which is basically the summary line that you see, you know, here um, in Wireshark. And it's configurable with your Wireshark settings or T-Shark settings, whatever. If you're only using very little information then it's fine, but you, it's very rare that you only need this little information. So let's also have a look at how we'll use it in a live capture. So we have this function here, which basically creates a live capture on the Wi-Fi interface. And we go over every packet and we check that it has a DNS layer and that its response flag is, well, it's false, meaning that it's a request. So if you just run this, and just go online and I don't go to Google and go to Facebook and Twitter and we'll just see all the DNS is here so of course we don't actually have to do this we could actually just add a filter which could be a BPF filter um, or a display filter um, we don't actually need both. If you can use a BPF filter, which is like a TCP dump filter, um, you should probably use this one because it's faster. Display filter is the filter that you'll see here in Wireshark. Um, it's a lot slower, but it's a lot more powerful and you can basically filter anything you want. So this is like the really basic functionality of PyShark. I'll try to do another video with more advanced stuff. Um, if you have any questions, just write in the comments or 
write um, or tweet at me or email me, whatever you want. And I'll try to do another one of these when I have time.